All right, welcome back to the Money Bear Podcast. I am super stoked for our guest that we have today. So as you know, here on the Money Bear Podcast, we talk about everything in relation to money, and we really can't talk about money without talking about income. And one of the ways that I was really able to increase my income was through working with Natalia Copeland, who is the founder of the Fast Academy and Needless to say, it completely changed my life, um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. Natalia, welcome. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you so much for having me, Chloe. I cannot wait to share this with all of your listeners. You are absolutely right. Investing in yourself through business and through investing in the stock market is the path to wealth. It seriously is. And so often we talk about money and people talk about saving money or they talk about investing money or paying off debt, but they leave out the conversation of income. And like, that's the key. That's the part that matters the most. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. So before we get tar started and talking about like how I know you and all of this stuff, kind of give your elevator speech on who you are, what you do, what is the Fast Academy? Well, hello, everyone. My name is Natalia Copeland. As Chloe introduced me, I'm the founder of I Speak Social and of the Fast Academy. So I help entrepreneurs who want to launch a digital product. We're talking courses, memberships, one-to-one uh, -one programs online, basically anything digital that you can sell in a one-to-many, right? And I have been doing this for about five years. I've been in business and marketing for about 15 years. I have a master's degree in my field, and I've worked with everybody from starting from complete zero to multimillionaires that are building massive teams and scaling up to like eight figures a year. So very exciting time right now. I think COVID definitely accelerated where we are in this industry, but there's so much potential for anybody listening who thinks it's too late. It absolutely is not. And that is what I help people do. Yes. And she's freaking amazing and really good at what she does. And I can say that as somebody who found her when I had been one-on-one -on -one coaching for about eight months, I would say. And I was getting to the point where I was coaching while also doing a nine to five job. So I was probably working between 60 and 80 hours a week, not only with my nine to five job, but with Clover, content creation, one-on-one -on -one coaching, all of that stuff. And so by the time I found Natalia, I was like on death's door. I was like, I'm gonna die, Natalia. And I was like, I think the very first month after I quit my job in October, I think I told you I had 60 one on one clients and most of my one on one clients are two Crazy. hours. Yeah. So it was just like, when I came to her, I was desperate. And I was like, whatever she tells me to do, I'm gonna do it. And luckily, that resulted in the very first digital product that I ever launched ended up being a $35,000 launch. And since then, which that was in December, Crazy. which I'm an insane person. I launched my product on December 23rd, two days before Christmas. So like, I don't know who does that. I mean, um, side note on that, because I feel like people are always getting stuck in their head about like, can't do it this week, can't do it that week. And Chloe was just like, I'm doing it. It's getting out there. And that's what you need, that momentum. So props to you for doing it anyway. Oh, 100%. I was like, is it a bad idea for me to launch this at Christmas? Like, this seems like insane. People are already spending too much money. There are like, they're not going to want to join a webinar. And sure enough, obviously, people did. Yeah. Um, but not only that, like what I think, you know, it's, it's one thing to have one amazing launch. But the real key here is that since then, I've had five figure and multi five figure launches every single month for the last six months. So it's just the power of the the course that I did with you is just absolutely incredible. So and the ROI. Oh, oh, and the ROI. Oh my gosh. I was like, after the first launch, I was like, wow, I can't believe I even hesitated. <laughs> I mean, I think that that's key. Obviously, if you can launch something and make money, that is something to celebrate, right? But it's having that consistency. And I think when you do that correctly, um, one of the things that you did is you stuck with it and you said, like, I'm going to keep launching. I'm going to keep making it better. I also think that people just don't realize that sometimes the first one might not be the best. In your case, it definitely was a strong first launch. Some people don't have as strong of a first launch, but then the second one is like phenomenal. So it's just like sticking with it and you absolutely did. So I love that about you. Yes, well, I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. It's certainly not in the way that I did. Um, so kind of tell us what even led you into this line of business? 
So I actually got a master's in England in um, marketing, and then I got a job working for an agency that was teaching Facebook ads at the time when it was like the only Facebook ad was right hand side ads like it was so green so new. Uh, then you know it started getting a little bit more popular I was inside of the media buying department. But the thing is, is that as you learn um, with paid traffic, it's only as good as like the place you're sending the traffic to. So then once I started my own business and I started coaching people in like paid ads, I noticed that they were like sending the traffic to, you know, really kind of janky experiences, you know, like customer experiences where it was just like a page, hey, come book a call with me. I know you have no idea who I am, but like, come hop on a call or, hey, uh, let me send you straight to a sales page. I know you've had absolutely no warm up, but do you want to buy this thing? And it was like all these broken experiences. And so I found myself fixing that back end more than implementing the ads like front end. And I got more and more passionate about doing that. And ultimately I was like, this is where I want to be. I want to help people build that automated customer journey on the back end so that by the time they're sending traffic in, whether it's paid ads, whether it's organic, my clients are like 50, 50, they're going to succeed. And that's, that's where my interest is in just automating that journey. And somebody like you, Chloe can speak to the fact that, actually creating those assets the first time around. Um, you know, I know the Fast Academy sped it up for you, but actually creating it, it, it takes like that foundational legwork, right? But now it's like every month it gets easier and easier. There are less things that you have to tweak or optimize. And so you're just left with this beautiful asset that you can use over and over again, which I am all about doing things, you know, once and then seeing how much I can squeeze out of it so that we can do, we can get the most with the least amount of work. Like, and that's oh, why I, I love the name of your course, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Lazy Investors course, plug in there. Uh, <laughs> but I love that so much because I feel like especially you work with like would you say you work with a lot of new entrepreneurs I work with a lot of new entrepreneurs in the sense where they're like you I yeah. was doing one-to-one -one work and I have never gone digital or I did something in my nine to five and now I want to take that nine to five experience into an online business mm -hmm. so I have like maybe 20 to 30 percent of people who are like I'm completely green. I'm starting from absolutely scratch. But most of the time people are coming from me like I have some experience, either education um, through my nine to five or through something that I've been really passionate about learning through books and podcasts. And now I think I can like help people succeed in that area. So there's a little bit of experience there. Yeah. Well, and the reason I ask is because I feel like specifically for that demographic is like we have shiny object syndrome, like nobody's business. Instead of us focusing on like perfecting one thing, we're often like, well, I did that one thing that didn't work very well. So I'm going to try this new thing. And then I'm after you try that new thing and you make what you think you can make off of it, you just keep going on to the next thing. And what I love so much about your approach is it's like focus on one thing until you make your first million dollars or do it for, I think you said six months. Six and it's months, like, yeah. Oh my God, it takes the pressure off to be like, I have to do all of these things all of the time. If I'm not constantly working, I'm failing. And like, for me, that was really what I needed to hear because I was so focused and pulled in so many different directions. And now it's like, in my mind, I'm like, this is the one thing I have to do. And because of that, I, those 60 hour, 80 hour weeks, I don't do those anymore. Like it's yeah. not, it's <laughs> not existent. And I'm like, even I, I remember talking to your sister, which but for those of you guys who don't know, she is Delian Barros' sister, the slay the stock market queen. Um, I was talking to her and I go, I feel like I'm like doing something wrong. Cause I have so much time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this? feels like something new, right? Yeah. So I'm like, let's start a podcast. Let's write a book. Let's do all of this to fill my time. But there's no way I could have done any of that without your system. Yeah. I mean, I think the sign of a good mentor and coach for those of you who are in the market for somebody to help you is somebody who actually takes like takes things away from your to-do list, helps you do less, not more, right? We are living in an age of information overload. We do not need any more tips and tricks. And like, what we need is tell me the bare minimum steps so that I can get traction, momentum. That's the key. And so I started 
coming up with this program from a place of what would somebody need to do so that they could start making money in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And I build a roadmap around that. And that just took away, like, we're not starting channels on five different social media platforms. We're not going to be posting 10 times a day. We're not going to be writing one email and then it goes off into the ether, never to be seen again. We are going to learn how to repurpose our efforts so that we can actually multiply time. And that's what you've done. And now you can fill it with things that you find more joy in and you can branch out in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And it's funny even talking about this. I was thinking about our earlier, like when we were talking about what you do, as you're talking about the funnel process and like leading somebody down this terrible customer experience. I think so many of us new entrepreneurs, when we hear the word funnel, we have no idea what that is. So for people who are listening, what even is a funnel? So the best analogy I like to describe a funnel is like, think about dating, right? So like your first date, your second date, all the way until you like get married. And maybe that's like when they actually buy your product. So a funnel is just basically like getting to know somebody and taking them step by step on a journey and experience. And so people out there are not understanding that selling online is about building a really great experience. So step one, maybe you have some sort of a freebie that you give people. It could be like a free guide. It doesn't have to be 20 pages. It could be one page, right? But just something for free that you give to people. From there, you're getting them onto your email list. And again, so many people are like, oh great, you got this freebie, you got on my email list, you will never hear from me again. And so the like that's basically like somebody ghosting you on a date, that was, right? It's that like- was one hundred percent me. Like I literally would be like, "Hey, get on my email list," and then like I forgot about my email list. <laughs> right. So so many people do this. Absolutely no shame because it's very very common where people are like, "I was told I had to have an email list." not really sure what I'm supposed to do with it, but here we go. So that's like step one. Then, you know, they get on your email list. There's like some nurture. That's step two. Then you have to actually lead them to a way to sell, right? So now we're talking about, are you going to hop on a phone call? Are you going to do a webinar? Are you going to do a three-day challenge? Are you going to do some sort of a, you know, a video series? Those are all ways in which you can sell to your audience. And now you are ready to ask them to buy. And mm-hmm. so many people are just, they're literally think about going up to a stranger on the street and being like, do you want to marry me? That <laughs> is what people are doing right now instead of let me take you through a journey. And what's great about this journey is people are going to start dropping off. People who are not a good fit, you are going to repel those people and you are going to really attract like your super fan, your most loyal people. And that just makes it so much more enjoyable so that when you do get somebody to work with you, you're like, oh, they're my dream. Like everyone I work with today is such a dream client. And that's not a coincidence. It is because my journey has attracted people that I absolutely love to work with. So that's what you get when you set this up properly. Yes. And that's what I love about even going through your course was like this idea. I think so many of us come in with scarcity mindset and it's something that I am still working through, but this idea that you have to be like everything to everyone. But if you do that, you're dishonoring yourself and who you actually want to serve. And who really wants to be working with people you don't actually, you're not actually a right fit for. And so even hearing that of like, you know, you don't want to be everything to everyone. You have to really figure out who are you actually going to help and figuring out that, that particular niche. It just, it, it helps make everything so much easier. And even like inside the niche, and I have a question for you on that, which is like, you might not be totally certain as to what your course is going to be about right away. That's fine, right? The goal is to actually start working with somebody that can help tease that out and like craft an offer. So like for you, did you know day one when you started uh, Clobear that you were like, I'm absolutely going to be teaching people about ETFs? Like, Absolutely not. Right. Oh my gosh. Clover went on such a journey where like, so I started Clover the blog in 2017 and it was this like nobody blog who I was literally just on there using it kind of like as a live journal to like chronicle my therapy journey. Ooh, live journal. Throw yeah. Back. It was basically like a live journal uh, or a MySpace, you know, where I was just literally airing out the experiences of going to therapy and sharing my story. And then slowly over time, 
resolving those issues in like the mental health space helped me realize I really needed to address some issues in the money space. And so then I was like, you know what, I'll start learning about this money thing and posting about this to hold myself accountable. And so I first started with budgeting and debt payoff. And then as I really got into it, I was like, fuck that stuff. I care more about this <laughs> investing. I want to know, I want to know how to make money and like grow my money. And so it took me a really long time because I even used to just be like just personal finance. And I think a lot of finance creators start out that way where it's like, I'm just going to talk about personal finance. And, you know, in my opinion, I think it's a little bit better to hone in a little bit more on just one thing because personal finance is so broad. Yeah. Um, so that's how I was like, well, what I really love about personal finance is investing. I think this is the most interesting and what people need the most help on. Yeah. But see, that's the thing, right? It was broad, but it's because you took like action in that direction that eventually you found your, your place. And I know so many people listening today who are thinking about starting an online business or potentially moving their one-to-one -one services to a digital product. They're looking for that, like, just tell me the exact right thing that my, you know, that I should do or like that my course should be on. And I want to like challenge you to think a little bit differently and instead ask yourself, what do I want to solve right now? What's a problem that I can enjoy solving for people today? And that might not be what I'm doing a year from now. And that's absolutely okay. Like yeah. Chloe, I was doing Facebook ads um, five years ago. You know, I still teach that a little bit on the side, but that is not my core thing. So be a little bit easier with yourself about picking your topic or like what your course or your niche and instead just focus more on like how can I take action that's more important 100% because you're gonna learn so much more by taking action than just constantly thinking about doing the thing like you've got to start doing the thing to first off realize if you even like it and yeah. then to see how it transforms because it will transform it'd be very boring if it was always the same like i'm sure in five years from now we will both probably be teaching about something else or something yeah. like adjacent or with another flip you know yeah absolutely um, i love that so going back to your business in particular you have helped clients not only have like five figure launches a month but also six figure launches a month so like what's the secret what what are you doing what is the magic that you're doing over there I think the the number one, I saw so many courses where it was like, here's a hundred plus hours of videos. Aren't you excited? And I'm like, no, absolutely not. I'm not excited. I, I like that's less. making me hot. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I'm like, oh. But that's how I think some creators position themselves as an authority. They're like, let me brain dump all of my knowledge on top of you but that's not gonna get somebody a transformation. So I asked myself again, how can I give people less to go through, but that's actually gonna give them you know, actionable things to complete. So my course is very digestible. The program is something that you could like get through concentrated in like less than a week. Obviously doing the work is gonna take a little bit longer, which is why I say 90 days. And normally I say 90 days because I tell people when they're making their promise of whatever they're gonna help people do and like, if they want to put a time frame, ask yourself, like, for the average person that does the work, when would I expect them to see results? And so for me, looking at my history, I'm like, for the average person that does results, they usually get results like within 90 days. But honestly, I have some people getting results within two weeks. We just had somebody, um, you know, get results within 30 days. And so it really is a mix. Obviously, there are some people that take longer, right? Because life happens. And so, um, but that's the whole reason why it's called the Fast Academy. I'm like, how can we get you traction as quickly as possible? So short course, actually getting you through it, action steps, that was key. The second thing was like the support, right? Again, you can have as much information as you want, but if you don't have this right here, this live touch of meeting with somebody a couple times a month, having that accountability saying like, hey, what do you think about this? You're just in this echo chamber of your own self-doubt and of your own like, I'm not sure if this is the right thing. Mm -hmm. And then we end up self-sabotaging and we don't get anything done. And then six months has passed and we're still right where we started. So again, I was just like, come to coaching, like 
show me what it is that's like holding you back. I will help you work through it. And then the last thing was templates. So my students are able to launch in record time because I am giving them like email samples, webinar templates. I'm giving them like the exact type of copy framework. I'm helping them take away that pressure of what should I write here? What should this look like? I'm like, use this design. It's known to convert. Like all of that is given to them. So again, it's, it's just collapsing time in a way that they're able to like reach that success in what I think is a super short period of time, considering how long it took me to get my degree, work at an agency, claw my way up, like get to where I am today. 90 days is not a long time. <laughs> no, it's not. And it's like, anytime I have somebody who's like messaging me about like, well, how do you do these like launches? And I'm like, Natalia, that's it. <laughs> like, go take the course, like stop, stop trying to DIY it all. And like, just go get the information you need. Because like I had particularly, I'm thinking of somebody who's actually launching today and they DIY the whole thing. And I was like, I was like, you know what? You should do this DIY, see how it goes. And if yeah. it doesn't get you the results you want, you better go do this course. <laughs> and I'm like, stop asking me for help. Go do yeah. this course. I mean, it's not <laughs> to say that there aren't people, of course, that can like make of it course. work but it is so painful. I mean, I'm one of those people that had a master's degree, had a ton of experience, and it took me 10 times longer than my students. So this is why today I see my students having the success and I'm like, you got there faster than I did when I started yeah. because I didn't have this. So I'm like, what is the program that I would have wanted back then? And my favorite uh, saying is like, like if DIY is turning into WTF, that's when you know, like it's time to find a mentor, somebody who's gonna help you get out of your own head and like just focus on solving the right problem for your business right now. Yes, I completely agree. And going back to your live coaching too, I remember what's so great about working with you is that you're gonna you're gonna bug me until I attend. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get little I'd get little Instagram messages from her just being like, Hey Chloe. How come I haven't seen you in coaching yet? I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm busy. And you're like, you bought this course. Like, why aren't you doing the work? Which I loved. Like, I, I know I started the, the course with a couple of other people and the people who actually got it done and finished yeah. were the people who attended live coaching. They were the people yeah. who were like showing up and talking and like getting their problems solved. And it's, it's just wild, um, how much that makes a difference. And like, there were things that I I probably would have spent so much time just thinking about and overthinking, like particularly my free guide. Yeah. I remember putting it together and like making it completely perfect. And I was going to keep working on it until I came to the class. And I was like, all right, Natalia, what do you think? And you were like, this is great. Go, go. Done. Stop. Yeah. Stop, next. <laughs> stop working on it. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's just that permission you need sometimes. Yeah. And I think seeing other people in the community doing the same thing, worrying about the same problems, realizing that you're not alone. I mean, when I started my business, you know, God bless my husband because he tried, he really did to like listen, but he's like, you know, eyes glazed over. Like, I do not understand what's happening here. So if you are in a space right now where your closest five friends are not entrepreneurs, your partner, your friends, like they don't know anything about online business, you start to doubt yourself because they're, you know, why would you go to somebody who is a W2 nine to five employee for help on how to like grow an online business. They mean well, they want to help you. But like when my sister decided that she wanted to leave law and like quit her job, everyone else in, you know, W2 nine to five thought she was crazy. I was like, okay, cool. You have enough money. You've got like your savings. You're good to go. Uh, your business is thriving. Let's do it. Like there was no doubt for me because for me, it was so common to see other people do this. So mm -hmm. you need to put yourself in a circle of people that are seeing these 10K, 20K, 50K, 100K months. That's what's going to let you believe that it's possible for you too. Yeah, for sure. I completely agree with that. And like, yeah, you, you know, I think too, when you're talking to your friends who are not entrepreneurs, there's a lot of projection happening as well. You know, and maybe you're doing something that they wish they could do, but they don't have the courage or the funds or the ability to do it because they've got people who are relying them on them and things like that. And yeah. so finding your tribe of people who you actually do connect with and like are, are fo facing the same goals is, is a big game changer. Yeah, um, absolutely. So what would you say off of all of your experience and the hundreds, if not thousands of people that you've coached, what do you think is the biggest issue that entrepreneurs are facing today? Oh, like for me, I would say number one is hiring the wrong person, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're hiring them off of, 
you know, maybe like they have a pretty Instagram feed or they look at the coach and, you know, I, I want to like have their lifestyle or something like that, but they're not actually sure of like the method the coach is teaching, or is that coach going to give them space to find their own success instead of just telling them what to do? I certainly will give my students a path, but you actually can't go to a coach and say, just tell me what to do for everything, right? Because guess what? Once that coach leaves, now it's their business, not yours that you built. So I think that's the number one thing. Stop looking for somebody that is going to answer every single one of your questions and be like, do exactly this, this, and this. And instead, go find somebody that has a proven system. So like for me, if you're somebody who does not want to build marketing automations, if you're somebody who uh, you know wants to do phone calls all day long and like lives all day long, like you're probably not going to jive with my program because, or like post 10 times a day. Like that's not really my method. That's not what I teach. So it's really important for you to look at what a coach or mentor is doing in their business and also look at the type of people they've helped and then see like, is this what I want for myself? So number one, definitely finding somebody that, that has that path for you. The second thing I would say is people get way too bogged down on my logo, my domain name, my branding, what tech tools am I going to use? And again, absolutely no shame here because I did all of these things. I spent months comparing tech tools to try to shave $10 here. I mean, I was super broke. I get it, you know? And so I had to like really hustle to try to figure out like what I could use that was as cheap as possible. And then like teaching myself and like the margins on the website, moving them over none of that is a revenue generating activity that matters. My favorite thing to say is like, um, you know, I have people who are recording courses like in their closet, you know, with their kitchen in the background, making millions. It, like the thing that you think is going to convince somebody to work with you is usually not the thing. So if you're worried about branding, logo, tech, that sort of stuff, I really, again, I wanna encourage you to like put all that to the side. And I hope you can take a deep breath when you do and say, okay, so then what should I be focusing on? And that's when we get into the meat. And I think so many people want to avoid that because that's where the work lives, right? If I can stay Hard comfy, part. yeah, if I can stay comfy in the, let me go make some Canva images or like mess around with buying the 10th domain that I've yet to build anything on, then I don't have to do the scary part, which is... I need to sell something. I need to right. sell in order to make money. <laughs> you're right. Cause that's kind of the trap of those little things is like, you feel like you're doing something, but you're actually not doing anything that's yeah. actually going to help you. You get that dopamine hit of like, I accomplished something today. I did something when in actuality, uh -huh. all you did is keep yourself stuck. Um, and then you're wondering six months later, you're like, yeah, this, this, it worked for her, but not for me. And most of the time, the reason is because of that, because you were focused on spending your time on the wrong things. And so I'm always like, my mission is to get to you before you get to that burnout that Chloe was starting to feel, right? Because yes. at that point, it's definitely like getting to an edge where you're like, I just want to burn this whole thing to the ground. Um, I want to find people before they get to that point and realize that you don't have to reach a point of total burnout before you can find an easier path. And digital products right now, this industry is not going anywhere. This is the place to be if you're looking for a way to make, you know, make money online, help people solve problems, but do it in a way where your income is not capped by one-to-one -one work. Yeah, truly. And I will say one of the things that I will always remember from a coaching call with you is I don't remember what I was talking about, but it was something like I was talking about the scenario with my funnel in terms of like, a what if this happens? Mm. And your answer to me was, sounds like you're creating a problem that doesn't exist yet. And um, that, oh my God, that has become like a mantra anytime that I'm doing that. And I actually say it to other people now. I act like I'm all wise and shit when really I just stole it from you. And like, you know, I, you know, I work with Mark on our mastermind and like, there are things sometimes where he'll go into like this, this tangent of like thinking of all these issues that we might be facing. I'm like, Mark, those problems don't exist. Let's right. not focus on those things right now. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> and good. Like, it's such a powerful statement because I mean, in literally every aspect of our lives. And it's like something that I have definitely struggled with over the years. And like that alone was worth the course. <laughs> I mean, it's either like we're creating problems that don't exist or yeah. we're trying to create solutions 
for problems that haven't happened yet because we want to protect ourselves. Like, what if this happens? But wait, what if this person does this? And I'm like, did it happen yet? Oh, no. Or maybe like, maybe it will happen, but like it'll only happen to 1% of your entire buyers. So now we're spending hours and hours and hours trying to create a solution for the 1% of that problem instead of just saying, you know what, when that happens, like I'll deal with it then, or there have, doesn't have to be like this whole big thing to like resolve it. And so I'm glad that that resonated with you because that's something I still say over and over again to people. I'm like, is this a real, real problem? Or is this like a problem that we're making up because we're afraid that, you know, we have to think of every contingency. And I know a lot of us entrepreneurs can be a little type A, myself included. So it really is something that we do, again, to like keep us safe and make yep. sure that we're covering all our bases. But you absolutely don't need that in the beginning. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And to go back to your point, too, about hiring the wrong person, I love that you mentioned that because I feel like there are so many business coaches out there. It's a super saturated market. And it's so interesting when you like look at the business coaches and you're like, yeah, but what business did you start? Like when, when, when did you ever have a business? How can you be a business? And the the business, the business is the business coaching where they're teaching people how to be business coaches. And like, it's so great to hear from somebody who, and and also learn from somebody who's like, no, no, no. Like I, I have this crazy amount of experience. I know what works. I've worked with insane companies that rhyme with Google (laughs) and like, like, you know, you've been killing it. So I think that's a really important thing. And I think a lot of new entrepreneurs can very easily fall into that trap of hiring somebody because of the lifestyle that they're posting about on Instagram rather than the actual information that they're providing. Or the results that they have, right? Like results, results, results. Like what are they teaching you to do? What are they actually doing? Are they doing what they're teaching? And do they have results from people across different industries that you can see and say, okay, like this is somebody that has the experience that I want. Um, Yeah, I think that 100% is the easiest way to make sure nowadays, lots of saturation, but I always like to say no matter how saturated an industry is to my students, like here you are, right? You're working with me. And the reason why you're working with me is usually because of a combination of the results that you saw that I brought in. Um, and what exactly I was teaching resonated with you in some way. So don't, don't get too hung up. That's like another big one that holds people back. They're like, my industry is too saturated. I can't possibly break into X, Y, Z space. And I'm like, I'm in one of the most saturated industries. And here I am making multiple six figures a year profit wise. Do you really think that, and if I hadn't done that, look at all the people that I wouldn't have helped and the ripple effect of the people they're helping. So you are definitely, there's people out there for you. 7 billion Mm -hmm. people on this planet, your people are out there. You don't have to worry that somebody else is doing it. 100%. And at the end of the day, the only reason people want to learn from you over learning from somebody else is they like you. They like your approach. They like your results. So yeah. I uh, that was just another gem that I took away from your uh, coaching as well. Okay. I got two more questions for you. One All is right. going to be one that you're not prepared for, and I'm excited to hear your answer. But before we get to that one, anything you've got coming up that you want to talk about that we can throw down in the show notes? What, what do you got going on? Absolutely. So one of my favorite things to do is teach a live class, actually breaking down this framework for students, giving them ideas on course topics that they could sell, like the most profitable topics today, and showing them how they can automate their marketing so that they can buy back their time and actually start enjoying this online business that they built for freedom, right? Instead of being trapped to their laptop. So if you go to fastmasterclass.com, you'll be able to register for my upcoming live class at the end of class i'll stay and answer questions i hang out with you guys it's one of my favorite things to do in my business that and the live coaching that i do inside of my actual paid program is just one of my favorite things to do it's really where you see like people's eyes light up and you're just like you see that transformation happen so i absolutely adore it so go check it out that's fastmasterclass.com and you'll be able to come meet me live and see exactly how the system works Yes, love it. And keep in mind, this is a free class. But in this free class, she provides so much value. And in the Q&A, she answers questions not only about her course, but also just about business in general. So like, Absolutely. highly worth the time. Um, so we'll put the link down in the show notes. Okay, I'm, I'm the over de- uh, like, what is it under promise over deliver queen. And that oh. is how 
that's how you lead with integrity in today's world. Truly and completely. I can attest to that. Um, so my question that I'm going to be asking all of my guests okay. is what is your very first money memory? Oh, that's a good one. Like in my, my entire life, what is my first like, money memory? If you can think back to like the first time. So for example, when I was a little kid, we would get a dollar a week for an allowance. And I remember specifically my parents be like, you can save this or you can, you know, spend it. And I always chose to spend it. So every Friday I'd go into the Kmart with my mom and I'd buy like these like little wax, you know, like those wax makeup things that you could get like on the rack. I would like buy one of those and like it'd be melted and forgotten about. And then my brothers would always save theirs. So I had this belief that boys were good with money and girls were bad with money. And there's just like this thing that existed. So. Okay. All right. So for me, I would say the earliest money memory I could probably think about is um, like, you know, those things that you would get from the bank to like roll up pennies and nickels and like dimes and stuff. Yeah. My parents would be like, Hey, if you like roll them all up and, you know, like do the work of putting them in like different things, like, I don't think I got all the money, but I think I would get some of the money that they would then like cash in of the bank. Right. Just all the change. We had like a change jar and like, I guess like maybe at the end of the month or something, they'd like cash it in. And I was the saver. I was definitely the person who would like, get that money and then I would like save it. Um, and so that is like, I think I started um, that mindset of, I have to like hoard money more than I have to spend money. Um, I also like sold lollipops and airheads like at the bus stop when I was a kid. Like, yeah, Dillian and I were hustlers. She did it too. So I got the idea oh from her. Gosh, she thinks so cute. She thinks she's not entrepreneurial. And I was like, do you remember when we sold candy canes like when we were kids in order to make some extra cash? And again, it was about like making the money and like saving as much as possible. Obviously that comes from like, you know, our, we, we grew up, poor and so like we didn't have a lot of money um I did not like get an allowance so for me it was always like hearing my parents say you can't have this or like like don't put that back or when we walk into the store make sure you like don't grab anything um when I did finally start getting money in my hands I would hoard it because it was like I don't know when I'm gonna see this again so yeah totally true it's usually one or the other which is really interesting question people are either hoarders or they're spenders and so like my husband is a spender mm -hmm. um and so we definitely had to work through some of that um in our marriage but I can see how like your childhood stories will seep into your life and if you don't take some time to like analyze and go why am I doing this? And like, why do I still believe this? Even though I have more than enough, that's when you can start to let the abundance in. So definitely. 100%. I love that story. I love that story so much. And I also just like hearing, cause it's not something you think about, right? You don't think when is like my first memory of money and like, uh, what's really funny about that particular story is I had Mark on yesterday from better wallet and I called him the candy drug dealer because he did this too. <laughs> and it's like, what are the chances that like all these entrepreneurs and like, I can't wait to see the common theme of yeah. like, okay, what are people's answers? Because like now I've got two, three, if we're counting Deli in of like candy drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're a kid, you have to hustle your own way, right? <laughs> well, and, and the funny thing is like, particularly for Mark, Mark has a huge sweet tooth. And so I said, you were really like, like particularly just selling candy to fund your own addiction. <laughs> and I was like, you were the candy drug dealer. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. I was like, this might have to be the title of the podcast episode. <laughs> I mean, I think that's going to be really cool to see because stories like that, you think like you're unique until you go on TikTok and you're like, I've never had a unique experience in my entire life. Oh my so God, right? things like this exactly like you're not alone if you're feeling this way it's probably because something happened to you when you were a kid but that doesn't mean that you have to let that be your story forever so yeah mark and i i can definitely see how we resonate that way with our candy drug dealing ways 100 <laughs> percent. i'm gonna have to tell him that i think that that's adorable um, awesome so Thank you so much for coming on today. You dropped so many golden nuggets. Tell everybody where can they find you? And we'll obviously leave the link to your masterclass down below, but where else can people find you? 
you can find me at I Speak Social. Funny story, I just hit 10,000 followers after five years in business. And another way to show that like you absolutely do not have to have a large following in order to make a ton of money online. But yes, at I Speak Social or on my website, ispeaksocial.com. Lots of goodies for you guys there. Chloe, thank you so much. As always, you are one of my favorite creators to follow because of your awesome dance moves. And so I really appreciate you having me and getting to share a piece of my story with your audience. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. And congratulations on 10K. That's a big deal. Thank you. That's a big whoop. <laughs>